And coming up on Real Screaming Kayaks episode 17, we head to the Haraki Gulf in search of workups. Coolest things to do on the kayak. Plus, understanding fish finders. We go over the finer techniques for hunting fish actively using jigs. All this and more coming up on Real Screaming Kayaks episode 17. Good fish, fish. And it's off! Screaming! This time on New Zealand Destination, we head out to the Hauraki Gulf in search of spring snapper workups. The Hauraki Gulf is a massive body of water and spans from the Auckland region down to the Coromandel and out to Great Barrier Island. The area we are targeting this time is more down the bottom end, close to the Firth of Thames. So today we're out here with um, workups in mind. And workups are a great thing at this time of the year. The Haraki Golf's well known for them. But even at other times of the year, we can um, you can have workups happening in various parts of the country. And you know we're hoping today it's spring in Coromandel. Sort of, we've already been through one month of spring, and we're you know we're looking to find workups because they're a lot of fun to fish. But in the interim, what you know, with workups, it's really important to to um, look around and locate fish, and also keep a close eye on what's happening with the bird activity. And that's what we're looking for with workups: is birds, you know, kahawai, and that sort of thing that come up to the surface to feed on the bait schools. You know, you get a lot of bait schools at this time of the year. But in the interim, you know, you've got to be patient and sit it out and wait for them and with this um, snapper I just pulled it on a little reef that I am pretty familiar with while I'm waiting for the workups to happen so nice little panning and we'll put that back but yeah what we're looking for is is workups so you've really got to keep your eye on what's happening out on the ocean um, look for the bird activity to start happening you know workups can just happen in front of you at any time and it's really, really important to um, keep an eye on the birds. They're the indicator for workups. So anyway, hopefully we come across some workups today and we'll show you what fishing them is all about. So when you're looking for workups, they can involve all sorts of bird species. Gannets, shearwater, terns, and even mollymorks. So, you know, that's the in, most of the time those are the sort of indicators but also seagulls too and even coming across like a, a whole patch of birds sitting on the surface can indicate that a workup has happened there or they're sitting there after a workup and it's a good place to drop a jig down or a soft bait and prospect because it's quite likely that the fish are still around underneath them looking for the scraps that are left over from when they went into their feeding frenzy. Wow! You know, I'm just scouting around at the moment looking for some fish and I happen to see quite a nice bit of mark on the sounder so dropped down on it, hooked up straight away pretty much, you know. Got to the bottom, they didn't, they're not always taking it directly off the bottom but yeah, hooked up and Basically, you know, feels like a not a bad fish. Not huge or anything, but um, yeah. And this is the thing with looking around at the moment. It's just more about sort of uh, finding those fish and having a bit of fun with it while I wait for these workups to happen. And you know, despite the lack of workups at the moment, things are shaping up to be pretty good so far. This is uh, quite a nice fish on the jig. 
I love this hunting with the sounder and, and using jigs. It's so effective and on the kayak, you know, you've got no noise whatsoever to interrupt you, you know, so, or warn the fish that you're there, so you can get away with it much better. Um, if you've never done it before, you know, it, it, it is one of the coolest things to do on the kayak. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Check that out. Just a good eating size fish full of beans, fought really, really hard. So, yes, yeah, stoked with that. Now, I've squashed the barbs down on these hooks so they come out real easy. I've been fishing barbless hooks, but I seem to be getting a lot of sharks lately on the jigs. So, um, yeah, I basically squashed the barbs down on those, uh, the ninchaku hooks. So, yeah, the thing I like about the lip grippers too is I've got this fish, I'm hardly having to handle it. I can show you what it looks like and now I'm going to let it go. So off you go bud and he went straight back. Well I was just about ready to give up and I started cruising back down the coast a bit thinking oh well workups aren't meant to be today and that's fishing but then as I'm just about getting back to where I launched from I see some birds working in the distance so I'm cruising out there now it looks like there's a quite a lot of birds big area and just what I've been waiting for it's quite a few boats out there it's not far from the mussel farms out in the middle of the firth actually so there's a few areas where they're diving pretty exciting so let's get out there and get amongst it <laughs> Well, by the time I got out here, it was a fair hike, at least three kilometres. The workup's kind of finished. But I'm out here now, and um, there's birds everywhere, and they're sitting on the water, so what is likely to happen is that workup will start forming again at some stage. So I'm just going to hang around out here and wait for it to happen. But in the interim, I'm just going to cruise around and look for the main bait school that they were feeding on because you know like I say they'll they'll come on the bite again and um, you know there's not too many boats out here like it took them a while to get out and, and amongst it and one of the main mistakes that a lot of boaties can make is actually driving through them so hopefully we don't get any of that but I'm just going to cruise around have a bit of a look around and see if I can, you know, I'm in the location now, so hopefully that um, this workup will eventuate again and all these birds will start up eventually. There's a bit of sign around on the sounder, so I'm just gonna, I've just stopped because, um, you know, there's a, there is fish down there, albeit not so um, full on or anything, but yeah, you know. I'm looking for those bigger fish, obviously, and um, you know I've just dropped the jig down. It's quite deep here; it's about 27 meters. There's a ton of stuff on the bottom, so I'm hopeful of uh, finding some better fish out here and having a bit of fun on the micro jigs and amongst them. So far, they don't seem to be. Yep, there we go. I was just about to say, so far they don't seem to be that interested, but, oh, and, oh, here we go. I just come across a really nice patch of fish. Yes. <laughs> Good fun. And the day's just getting better. There's, there's got to be some good fish out here amongst these um, gannets, you know. They've been working hard out, so, you know. It's always nice to sort of come out here. This guy started off feisty as in amongst the school and he's still he's still pretty feisty, but not that real big double figure fish. 
I come a fair way out, you know. It took me a while to get out here. Being in, that's one disadvantage with the kayak, but one of the cool things about it is we can sneak in quietly, whereas the boats tend to make a bit of noise. And, um, yeah. I mean, we're in the middle of school holidays too, so there's quite a few young kids out here. So it's cool to see, you know, see them brought out here. And this looks like it's a car way. And it is. Oh, something different for a change. Here we go. And um, didn't expect that. Thought that was more of a snapper than a kawai, but yeah, you're going to get those kawai out here and amongst these schools too, so nice kawai. Not a huge kawai. We're going to let this guy go, but um, nonetheless, a good scrap on the light gear. There he is there. Beautiful looking fish. See you, bud. Woohoo. Yep, and again, you know, there's certainly no shortage of fish sign out here. Not they're not really the concentrations that I'd like, but, um, you know, this feels like a not a bad fish, actually. Snap, it feels like a snapper. It's got the old nods like a snapper, but you just don't know out here because there's quite a few car wire around by the looks of it as well. But, uh, yeah, this guy's giving me a bit of a scrap, so good fun. You know, birds are starting to move a bit too, some of them, so, you know, it pays to keep an eye on them and um, see what they're doing and this is why I've come out here because I'm hoping that they start working again. Yeah, good fun. This fish has given me a fairly good scrap actually. Staying down, trying to trying to dive down. I don't think he's the monster but um, certainly a respectable fish. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice fish. Nice snapper. Woo. Got his mouth firmly closed. He doesn't want to let go of that jig. Well hooked in the mouth. It's one thing I love about these jigs. I'm watching a lot of other people around the place and I don't think they're catching. I haven't seen anybody pulling anything up just yet. So, but um, you know, this is this act of hunting with these jigs every time. Yes, there we go, look at that. Very nice fish, happy as with that. But I'm gonna let him go, because I've already got a few fish in the fridge at home. And um, you know, this time of the year, these fish are already getting ready to spawn. So there's that jig, beautiful. Silver, silver slow jay, there you go. Look at that, lovely looking fish. In fine condition, love the colours on it. Beautiful red, red snap, snapper. Off you go, buddy. Whew, gone. Awesome. So I can see the birds have kind of got up again and are flying around. They're actually circling north of me and um, pretty keen to get amongst it. But looking down on the sounder, there looks like some pretty decent fish down there, so I'm going to drop straight down and just see what I can pull up below me. But yeah, the birds are they're doing a bit of a circle out there, and you've got to keep an eye on them. There's quite a few boats around, so it's it's a case of you know getting there when I can. They're obviously they're gonna they're gonna beat me to it. These boaties, you know, the motor power is always going to win over, but um. Some nice looking mark on the bottom at the moment, so I'm just going to work this jig and see what I can entice with it. Some some respectable uh, sign back there, but um, nothing. So, but yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on those birds because they are they're going to. Here we go. Yes, they're going to start up again. So there's some really good sign here on the sounder, fantastic. And you know, not the huge fish that I'm looking for at the moment, but there is plenty of sign on the sounder and you know, that's what we want. So we keep with it and keep fishing and pulling up these fish, you know, exciting. Great fun on the micro jigs. You know, can't ask for better. There's a ton of 
fish following this fish, whether it's a kawai, I don't know. Probably feels like a snapper more to me, but tons of fish with it, you know, on the sounder. Here he is, he's blowing his ear. Very nice. And that's what it's all about. It's just having a bit of a blast on the snapper. And whatever else is there, and that's the thing, you know, I'm prepared for whatever comes my way. There could be, you know, there could be some really, really good fish, like kingfish here too, you know, they, that's the thing with these workups, they have all sorts of stuff. So I'm just dropping down again because, man, there is some mark here, some serious amounts of mark, you know, so I just keep working the jig and this is why I love fishing the jig so much, I'm getting quite a few hit. yep, straight in, oh, this feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this feels like a better one. This hasn't really shown its true potential yet. Oh, here we go. This could be a kawai. He's swimming up. So maybe this one just sat deep and now he's coming up. Yep, it's definitely got to be a kawai the way this thing's acting. There it goes. Good fun <laughs> on this gear. You know, excellent. Real buzz. You know, kawai is such a cool fish. As far as the sports fish go, they race around like crazy. And, um, you know, I'm just having a blast now. Considering it started off a slow morning, we're now getting into some, some really good um, fishing. Thanks to the workup, you know. And this is the kind of reason why I love to come to them. And hopefully we can get these birds working and I can show you this workup and, and what it's all about. So there we go. One thing you've got to be careful with with car wires, well, is um, make sure you put your reel in free spool mode when you when you um, bring them on board because sometimes they can flip themselves over. There we go. Beautiful fish. Off he goes. So all I'm doing is just cruising around looking for the odd bit of sign on the sounder and dropping down on it. And I'm having loads of success. In amongst these boaties, I'm hearing them going, Oh, the fishing's hard, isn't it, you know? Well, actually, no, it's not hard. It's just that they just do the same old thing, drop down their anchor, bait and burly, you know? And in this situation where the fish have been feeding up and the birds, the jig is what works really well. In fact, I reckon I could throw down a um, scoop at some stage, but because the, there's fish all over the place the jig's quite effective in that you know you can pinpoint where a fish is and then drop down to it and that's the key whereas these guys in their boats they make a lot of noise you can see them from below they can hear them and they're they're weary you know fish are, don't are smart you know so you've really got to be on to it so I'm just going to keep looking around I can see fish even down at the 10 meter I'm getting hit and I'm trying to hook one that's you know playing a bit of havoc with my jig mid-water and that's the thing you can fish any part of the water column with these jigs and control what you're doing and you know when you see a snapper swimming along in mid-water you know it's possible to drop down right to it and put it in front of its nose and hook it all of a sudden the gannets just got up and started on the heading over sort of east of it and man they're moving around a lot now they're all flying up in the air and looking around there's been a bit of diving going on it's hard to keep up with it I'm in hot pursuit and I'm just sort of waiting I'm just watching the birds and waiting to see where they go at the moment they're sort of all over the place though and you know, pretty exciting stuff. There's a lot of anticipation, but also, you know, to do something like this, you've got to have plenty of um, liquid refreshments on a day like today. It's hot work and it's very physical, but um, yeah, the rewards can be really worth it, you know, chasing these workups around. I'm seeing a few fish on the sounder, but nothing really substantial. So I'm just sort of biding my time now. I'm waiting and waiting to see what comes of it you know something's got to come out of this there is um you know oh oh look at that oh 
That hit me on the drop, this fish, and it went straight for the bottom. Oh man, that was awesome. So there you go. Oh, this feels pretty decent. Might be a kawaii actually, but I saw some birds sitting on the water here. They're all diving here, so I, I sort of came over. Man, this fish is staying deep. This could be a kawaii actually, the way it's acting, but it raced, it took my jig and just took off to the bottom, and now it's coming up. But this is the kind of action that we're looking for. We're trying to find those schools of fish that are pushing bait fish up on the surface and that's what the gannets are chasing. And with them can be some very, very nice snapper, but not just that, kingfish. So, but I would say this is definitely a kawai by the feel of it. Yeah, I just got a glimpse of it. It is definitely a kawai. But yeah, that was, that was cool. It just took off, it, it grabbed it on the drop and just headed for the bottom with it, you know, so certainly extreme fun in this, um, on, on a day like this, you know, can't beat it. And you know, I don't care what anybody says, kawai, uh, always good fun on light gear, you know, there's no doubt about it. They put up a heck of a fight all the way to the kayak and, um, you know, it's all good fun, especially when you're out fishing. It's not a bad kawaii, actually. See if we can bring him on board. There we go. Very nice. So he just took that slow J heart out and went straight for the bottom. There we go. <laughs> oh no, he's still got my jig in him. <laughs> I unhooked him, but he must have got hooked when he leapt out of my hand. Got to be careful, that could have been a broken rod then, so lucky I grabbed, reacted and grabbed that line so quickly. So well unhooked this time, there we go. Feisty as, I'm going to let him go. And I can see the gannets now over there circling, you know. This is the hardest thing on a kayak, you know, you're under your own power and it's not that easy to chase these sort of workups. Yep, they're on the dive over there now. And this is it, you know, part of it is just hanging around this area and waiting and hoping that some of this action just unfolds in front of you and then being ready to pounce on it and get you, you know, whatever you got on the end of your line into the, into the, down there into the fish. You can see all this activity. There's birds flying around up and down. They're kind of looking at the moment, looking for opportunities to dive down and pounce on bait fish that are being pushed to the surface by other fish. So yeah, it's just a matter of waiting. But over here, I can see a little bit of activity. There's a few birds have been diving in over here. So it's really, really hard when you've got um, this kind of scenario where it's so spread out. You know, the, the gannets have an advantage over me and that is they can fly a lot quicker than I can pedal my kayak. But, you know, I keep watching where those workups and where they're diving, and I sort of pursue it. And generally, where there's fish sitting on the water, like up ahead, then, and there they go, you know, there's a whole lot of birds there. They're, they're shags, or a lot of people know them as cormorants. And, um, you know, they're just sitting there, the gannets have been diving in there, so, anyway, while we're here, you know, there's going to be fish, and I think I'll start using my sounder again now and just start dropping down on what's below us on the sounder. You can see there, you know, there's fish down there, intermittently though, because there's no, um, sort of full-on workups at the moment the fish are sort of not that concentrated although I do believe there's some bait fish lurking around and that's what's got these birds excited and hanging around so we'll keep persevering just sitting in an area where there's been some gannets diving and they were just sitting on the water but a ton of sign down there and just hooked into a kawai and then got onto something else and this feels like a snapper staying pretty deep and um it's got those those telltale signs of a of a good snapper you know 
definitely got some weight to it. Oh, I'm not really gaining anything on this fish at the moment. Um, so yeah, I hope it's not a kawai, but it hasn't raced for the surface. It's, it's trying to stay down low and um, awesome. This episode features my Hummingbird Helix 9 Gen 2 Mega. So today what we're doing is we're just cruising along and I'm just going to show you just quickly how to drop down and actively hunt fish with the jig by dropping down on them. And this is the great thing about this modern day technology that we use in these sounders. They just basically allow you to track what's happening actively on your fish finder with your jigs and it's a huge advantage it's, it's another fishing tool and I love this hummingbird mega chirp unit it's um, just so accurate when it comes to this sort of fishing and you know to be able to watch what's happening like this and it gives you that confidence to know that you're um, you're in the right place it's tricky to sort of judge when you're traveling along too and trying to do this you've got to really um, sort of cruise along quite slowly you know if you go too fast you know you've got to it's hard to deploy that jig and get it right on the money if you know what I mean so you know so it's quite important to come to a bit of a stop and um, here we go here comes a bit of, bit of good fish sign I'm liking what I'm seeing here on the sounder man looks like a whole bunch of fish so you know it's quite important to just drive around and work the jig through those fish and um, eventually you'll come across some that are interested in you know in your jig so just keep focused and keep working it and and you know you you will come into some good fish um, I've got a bit of sign here so I'm just you know you, I've sort of come to a bit of a stop and I've just deployed the jig and you'll see it on the sounder going down and this is a great thing about this new technology the tricky part about it is actually and there we go I've just seen the fish having a bit of a engage with it and here we go yes so that's that advantage with dropping down on those fish this isn't a big fish or anything you know um, and getting this right is quite difficult it takes a bit of practice but once you get used to it and you get a bit of a feel for it then it can be quite effective here we go oh a nice snapper I've earned this fish man you know it's not the stonker that I wanted in the way of a kingfish I've been looking for kingies all day but I am now just looking for a good feed of fish and this guy's definitely gonna feed us no worries at all here we go Whew. he gave me a heck of a good scrap in shallow water I gotta say beautiful looking fish look at that stunning colors nice 50 sort of centimeter snapper I'm happy as for more information on hummingbird fish finders visit the website And in part two, our adventure chasing workups continues in the Haraki Gulf. Size snapper. Then we cover all you need to know about setting up for soft bait fishing, including spooling your reel and then tying the knots so you're ready to go out and fish them. Special thanks to our sponsors. Outdoor Sports New Zealand provide the Old Town kayaks and Ocean Kayak that get us to the action. Humminbird provides the technology that finds the fish. Railblazer customizes our kayaks. Shark skin protects the body against the elements. Neptune assists with the free diving. Pelage helps gather the seafood. Abu Garcia, Jigstar, Maxil and Pen fight the fish. <laughs> <laughs>